my gosh, hey, I have the craziest story I have to tell you, okay? I'm, do you have a little while? Because it's kind of, it's kind of a long story, okay? And I want you to, like, hear the whole thing from start to finish. So, I mean, you have, I need you to cut out a chunk of time for me, okay? Can you do that? Are you available at the moment? Okay, great. That's great. That's great. Um, okay, where do I even begin? I, it was the craziest turn of events I've ever experienced personally in my life. Um, but I guess I'll just start, you know, right at the beginning. So, you know, I woke up and it was, it was, it was, it was a normal day. It seemed like a normal day, but I had no idea that it was going to be like, in my car and there's no gas there's no gas in my car how did there I, someone must have siphoned the gas out of my car because i know it was i mean it had to have had a little bit of gas it's not like i got home you know and it ran out like right when i got home like i had at least enough to drive the car you know i i do cut it a little close So I start going door to door, right? I have to find out who did this, right? So, you know, I'm going up to the... And, you know, what do they say? Get the fuck out of my... You know, no, I'm not like... So I'm like, okay, fuck, you know what? I don't want, I don't want that, I don't, I don't want any trouble, all right, so I, I get the fuck out, all right, I, I know when I'm not welcome, so okay, so all of that so far has just been like, you know, that was like within like the first 30 minutes of my day. But then things get really crazy when... So I push my car all the way to the gas station, all right? Because I don't have gas, so I have to get gas. You know, and I'm pushing my car down the road and there's like a hundred cars behind me honking and it's like, just shut the fuck up. Okay. I get it. You want to, you want to go, but like I'm pushing my car. Can you have a little bit of sympathy? You know? So like, oh, it's like a hundred miles away. Middle of nowhere. I mean, you know that we So I finally get there and I am like sweating bullets. Let me tell you, I mean like, whew, long way to push a car, but you know, I powered through, you know, it wasn't that big a deal. I, you know, <laughs> there's, a, there's a bag on the pump, no gas. So I'm like, what the fuck? Did the world run out of gas? Why is there no gas at this gas station? So I go, I walk it. I'm like, yo, where's the gas? Where's the gas? He's like, oh, we don't have gas. I'm sorry, I thought you were a gas station. All right? Gas stations have gas. That's where you get gas, right? So like, just make more gas. And he's like, uh, sorry, it doesn't work that way. And I was like, oh, sorry, you're getting robbed. I took the bag from the pump, holding it in front of him. I mean, like, it's not even really my fault at that point, right? Like, you gotta have gas. 
your gas station. Like, you're just asking to get robbed at that point. And he's like, I'm, I'm being serious. Please put the gun down. Like, I, we don't have gas. And I'm like, I know that you're lying. Give me the goddamn gas or give me all the money in the cash register. Are these chips on sale? And he's like, um, no. And so I'm like, all right, fine. Well, I guess I gotta pay full price. So, you know, I buy the chips, um, and then I just dip. But unfortunately, you know, I get outside and he's already called the police or something. You know, maybe he has one of those secret buttons under the counter, you know, like the panic button or whatever. Um, cause cops, everywhere you know they've got the helicopters there's a bunch of cars they've got all the lights on me i can like barely see what's going on it was it was a little intense you know at first i was almost kind of like just stunned by the lights i couldn't really process what was going on you know but it was you know i know how to handle myself in these types of situations so you know i did what any person would do and you know i did and it's So I'm in my car, you know, got it in neutral, and it's going downhill at a steady pace, and it's getting faster and faster because, you know, it's going downhill. And I don't want to hit the brake because they're right on my tail. So, like, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, like, there's a turn at the end of this hill. Like, I'm screwed, all right, because I, either I brake or I take the, the, the turn too fast. It's a lose-lose. <laughs> the parachute I'm like oh thank god I forgot I had this so I, I throw that out the window boom you know <laughs> they can't see at all I'm around the corner, they realize it's too late, and they all take the turn way too fast, and they roll off into a ditch. So I have to find a way to get out of sight of these helicopters, because they're still on me, you know, all the cop cars are gone by this point, but like, all the helicopters are still there, and they're just following me around. So, like, more cops will show up eventually, I imagine. Um, so I'm like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? I got to think of something to, you know, like, create distance, you know. And my car doesn't have gas, and there's no more hill. So, you know, I'm kind of stuck. So I abandoned... <laughs> So I'm like, okay, well, this is perfect, perfect, abandoned building in the middle of the woods. I can go inside. Maybe there's like a secret tunnel or something. 
so that, you know, I go inside and they think I'm inside and then I use the secret, secret tunnel and I come out somewhere else and they're not, you know, looking for me out there and then I can get away. That was my plan. So I go in to... The There's a bunch of raccoons in here. And they're doing like some kind of satanic ritual. Candles everywhere. There's like a pentagram on the floor. Um, you know, it's one of those moments where you like open the door and everyone inside turns to looks at you. And it's just like everyone's kind of frozen. Everyone's just like not sure what to do. Like I shouldn't be here. You shouldn't be here. I don't know what's going on. You know, there's a million thoughts running through my head. Um, so I just decide, you know, introduce myself, you know, make myself known, uh, let them know I'm not a threat. You know, I've got bigger problems right now than these satanic raccoons. So I'm thinking, you know, it's the lesser of two evils, really. So, so So I'm like, finally, okay, fine. Um, do any of you guys know if there's a secret tunnel that leads out of here? Because, um, you know, that was kind of like my, my, my last resort. Because uh, the helicopters are still, I can hear them outside, right? They know I'm there. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Can you lead the way? Trap door opens up, and there it is, secret tunnel. It's like it was destined, because you know, it's like one of those things. Like you, you think it, like you, you put that energy into the universe, and that's what ends up happening. I, I mean, it's exactly what it was. Because I went in thinking there was a secret tunnel, and there is one. I mean, it's just, it's it's just you know that, that, that kind of thing is not a coincidence, you know. So. <laughs> like a maze I didn't know where to go so I just <laughs> can't go wrong going just straight you know if I just go straight I, at least I'll know I'm not backtracking at all you know I can't get lost if I just go straight that was my thinking anyway <laughs> really tired uh like how long is this tunnel um i turn back no raccoons great um really dark by the way i mean there were only like a few leds down there to light the way so i'm thinking i'm screwed so, like, <laughs> that's the helicopter sound I must have doubled back somehow in the darkness. Maybe I turned around. Um, I must be back at the at the at the abandoned building. Um, so I just keep going. I, I figure, you know, it's it's at this point it's better to get out of the tunnel, the endless tunnel, than it is to like avoid the police, right? So I you know I get to the I get to the ladder. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. No raccoons, no ritual, no candles, no pentagram. It's like they weren't even there. That's weird. So I go outside. It's not helicopter noises. Someone's mowing the lawn. This building isn't abandoned anymore. It's in the middle 
of like a bustling, like a, like not a, like a big city, but like a, you know, like a small town and it was like a town square. Um, like what the, what the hell's going on? I, I just came out of this tunnel that I just went in from an abandoned building. I come out and now, you know, we're not in the forest anymore. There's no police anymore. There's no raccoons. There's no satanic ritual. There's no candles. There's no pentagram. What is going on? And now I start getting worried because I'm like, well, what about my car? You know, I left my car on the road. So like, what, what about my car? I don't, I don't even see the road that like led me here. Um, I mean, I had to walk in the woods for some time to get to the abandoned building, but like still like, where's my car? <laughs> Yo, um, what's going on here? Like, what is this place? And he doesn't speak English. Um, I don't think he speaks any human language, to be honest, because um, turns out he actually isn't human. Uh, I didn't realize it from a distance. It was he looked kind of similar to a human at a distance, but as I got closer, I realized he's actually just a massive snail, like twenty foot tall snail. Uh, and I look around, and everyone is actually 20 foot tall snails and I'm like oh that's not normal um so I'm like excuse me for one second I just gotta go do something really quick I start backing up you know <laughs> So I'm like, okay, let me just check. I'll just check to see what's in these buildings. Cause like, yeah, I mean, there's no harm in checking, right? So I, I go up to a random building. I open the door, pull it open and I peek inside. It's empty, completely empty. Like what, what? I mean, it, I, I guess it makes sense. Cause these snails clearly wouldn't fit inside these normal sized buildings. But like, um, why, why did they build buildings if they can't even use them? And that's when it hit me. I'm kind of worried at this point and I'm really starting to think that, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting my car back. Um, I'm also worried that I'll never fill my car back up with gas again. Cause that was kind of the whole point of my day was to fill my car up with gas after someone siphoned the gas out. Um, because I still don't think that I used up all the gas. It's just not possible. I mean, yeah, it's just, it doesn't make any sense. So like, that's a bummer. Um, so, like, you know, I'm walking down the street, I'm kind of, you know, checking my surroundings, making sure I'm not getting followed. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just kind of checking left and right. But then all of a sudden I get this, like, you know, you get that feeling when, like, you're being followed. So, like, I turn around. There's, like, a million snails. A million 20-foot snails. Um, and, like, they seem angry. They're, like, chasing me. But the thing is, is that they're slow because there's nails. Um, even at 20 feet, they're still pretty slow. Uh, so like, I'm like, okay, well, I guess I should get out of here because they clearly don't like me. Um, 
you know, that's one of my strong suits. I think I, I know when I'm not welcome, like earlier in the story, if you were listening, you know, um, so I just, you know, I, I kind of pick up my pace a little bit cause I don't want them to be able to catch me. Right. And I just keep walking and eventually I get to a tree. All right. This tree was a little different because the bark was purple and the leaves were yellow. Um, and I was like, that's not, I don't think that's what trees normally look like. Um, and, th and then I, so I like, I knock on the tree and this guy inside is like, yo, what do you need? And I'm like, well, you know, I got to get home. I got a car, I got to fill it with gas, you know, the whole thing. And then like, he's like, okay, whatever, get inside. So all of a sudden, <laughs> There's like a whole civilization down here. And I'm like, what What kind of wacky Dr. Seuss world did I fall into? Because they've got purple trees and 20 foot snails and underground civilizations. I just don't, I don't understand. Can I just get back to my car? That's all I care about at this point. And so thankfully, you know, There's like a hundred things on this list, but probably more than a hundred, honestly. A uh, super long list, and I have to check off all the things that like I remember about my world. Uh huh. And so like, I guess so they can like figure out where I came from. So I like I answer their fucking survey, and I hand it to them. And I'm like, is that it? And they're like, um, no, actually, we need you to like give your blood. Uh, and so we can run all these tests to make sure you're not like gonna infect our whole civilization with some like otherworldly disease, you know? So I'm like, okay, whatever. It's not my problem, but if it gets me home, you know, I just need to get back to my car, okay? I just, do you guys have cars? I guess not, because they live underground, but, uh, you know, the carbon monoxide would build up in an underground civilization if they had cars. But anyway, so I go to the doctor. Or, well, I'm calling him a doctor, but I don't know what the fuck he was, honestly. So, like, wake up three days later. Um, I thought I was gonna die. Uh, I'm really pale. I feel really weak. Um, and I don't know where the hell I am. I'm in like a hospital gown, except it's not a normal hospital gown. It's, it's like a hospital gown, uh, made out of like, um, like cement. So it's not very like, I don't even know how it worked. It was just really uncomfortable. So can I just get home? I just need to get back to my car. You have some otherworldly disease. And I'm like, no, I don't. I'm perfectly healthy. And they're like, well, maybe you're perfectly healthy. But like, if we get exposed to you, like we'll die. And I'm like, well, that's then just send me home because like that's then we'll be separate and they're like well we can't let you use the machine because then you'll have been inside of it and then we can't like clean it and i'm like well have you heard of like a hazmat suit and they're like what the hell is a hazmat suit so i had to explain like i guess a civilization that uses concrete fabric is you know they're not super good at understanding like sanitation and things also that syringe was like way too big i don't know why they had such a big syringe but anyway so they understand i think they understand so they're like okay cool we'll we'll, we'll work on that 
I'm still trapped in this underground, weird, wacky world, um, waiting for them to build this hazmat suit for me. They finally build it. They give it to me. Um, it's clearly not at all what I described, so they clearly didn't understand it. But as long as they think that it works the way I described, that's all I care about. Um, so, yeah, they, they let me get in their machine. I went back to, you know, here. And, you know, here I am. I did end up getting my car back, but it was a bitch having to push it back up that huge hill that I had rolled down in neutral at the beginning of the story. But, yeah. So long story short, I mean, I I I I, I got the money, I got the chips, uh, and I actually, you know, by the time I had gotten back, the gas station up there did actually have gas, so I was able to get gas, uh, so that was cool. Uh, so yeah, I filled up my car, and yeah, that that was basically the story. So what do you think? What do you mean you weren't? You weren't paying complete and total attention to the whole story. I mean, it was like the craziest story of all time. Have you ever heard? A better story than that? How could you have possibly not paid attention the whole time? How could you have possibly lost focus at all during at any point of that story? That doesn't